Today, let's look at five conversation styles that indicate you may be a victim of emotional incest. So conversation styles are a good indicator if you're wanting to know where you're at in the process of recovering from being emotionally smothered by one of your own parents or both. It may help us realize that yes, I indeed was robbed of my identity to some degree by my parents or an indicator of our progress as we're now an adult and working through the emotional taking over. So either way, it'll pop up in our conversation style. Let's examine some of these styles today, starting with number one, your conversation style is that of being a people pleaser. It comes out in the way you talk. You're not really present in the conversation. You're more anticipating what they're going to say. What can I do to smooth things over? What can I do to make this person feel more comfortable? What can I do to be more positive right now? So in the anticipation of what's coming, that's the performance mode you had to be in as a child with one of your own parents. So this will show in your adult conversation by always going along with the emphasis is on pleasing the other person versus pleasing yourself. You almost forget that you're there, right? Now the people pleaser conversation mode can include somebody who's very talkative and witty and charismatic and people are really drawn to their conversation perhaps. So it has nothing to do with these qualities. It's all about really having to anticipate other people's needs, which is a bit opposite of number two, the quiet, shy conversation mode. Sort of withdrawn, not going to take any risks here. Very reserved and cautious about what you say. People may say you're shy, but in reality, it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with being shy per se. It's all about not feeling safe in childhood. If you're given verbal or nonverbal messages to just shut up and we don't want to know what you're thinking or feeling right now, then of course you'll likely bring that into adulthood where you're going to be kind of not the life of the party. A bit more of the wallflower you just want to blend in it may not be who you really are at all you may have so much you'd like to contribute and to say but through this awareness you can see how much you're having to shut it down and repress yourself based on your childhood and of course this will show in your conversation mode notice how you're just you know, you're kind of mumbling you're not wanting to say too much long periods of just listening being very quiet this was your coping mechanism in childhood so now you can pay attention to it in your adult life and the third conversation style is artificial mode conversation now that's a bit different from number one and number two perhaps you were assigned a role in childhood that you've now brought into your adult life so number three is about putting on this role this mask it i was always the funny one i was always the serious studious one I was always the rebel. I always got kind of angry all the time. When of course some of these roles may not represent who you really are at all. Maybe everyone in the family had some sort of toxic role. And in bringing yours into adulthood, you can show in your conversation style. So notice if you're relating to others from the role, it's just a way to protect ourselves because letting down that guard when we were kids was too risky. We couldn't be who we really were, but it certainly was safer to play the role. It was more predictable and we knew our parents knew how to relate to the role. Number four, the conversation style of being a little boy or little girl. So it shows in the way you say things, the way you ask questions, the way you present yourself. You're always coming across like a little kid to some degree, maybe trapped back in the grade school years or high school years and you're relating to life in this way and it's showing in the conversation. Now this is of course because developmentally your parents didn't want you to really grow up and find your wings and be an adult who has an opinion and have a voice. So you had to learn to present yourself in these juvenile ways. Now this can include being parentified where the child had to be the parent of the parents because even though they took on that responsibility inside they're still just a kid trying to grow up and maybe they're clinging to the part of them that's still just a kid wanting to grow up, right? Or on the flip side, somebody who's been infantilized or raised as a little baby all the time, the perpetrating parents want to keep them small. And so they learn that it's just easier to just act like I'm a baby. And so this may continue into our adult life and in our conversation style. Notice if the way you say things, ask things, maybe your body language verbally or non-verbally is presenting a little kid and just know that this is the old coping mechanism following you into your adult life. And the number five conversation style is you go into socially awkward mode. 
And that shows in your conversation style. You're socially awkward. But there's good news with this style. There's nothing wrong with it because usually it's a sign that we're making progress. And this is because you had to present an inauthentic part of yourself to your parents. And so you never really got to know who you really are. So the reason this is a positive stage to go through is because it means you've done enough work where you're now in the process of sharing who you really are, but you don't have the practice with it yet, right? It's new for you to just sort of sit with something, take it in, and then reflect and share your conversation style on how you really feel about something, the authentic you. And so initially, because you haven't had practice, it's going to feel awkward for a while, perhaps. And that's fine because it means you're on your journey of getting in touch with what you're all about. Let the awkwardness be there. And over time, that awkwardness will likely decrease. And remember, none of this is your fault. These are all just coping mechanisms that tie into the fact that you weren't allowed to be you. You were robbed of your identity to some degree to please a parent who took you over for their own emotional needs. So please leave me some comments below. I just mentioned five. Would you like to add number six, seven, eight, nine, or 10? Feel free. Please subscribe to my mental health YouTube channel if you like these kind of videos. And until next week, this is Brad Shore signing off from Ask a Shrink.